Hi, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Cube Conversations um, with Wikibon.org. My name is Jeff Kelly. Uh, early this year, Wikibon published the first definition of server sand. We were getting a lot of interest from our community around server sand. Uh, and today, I've got the author of the report, senior analyst Stu Miniman, uh, who's going to talk a little bit about just what server sand is and talk a little bit about the developments in the market, uh, specifically uh, VMware's recent announcement around the uh, general availability of their virtual SAN product. So, Stu, welcome to theCUBE, and tell us a little bit about the definition of server SAN for those who may not be that familiar with it. Sure, Th thanks, Jeff. So, uh, it, people in the storage world, uh, you know, understand that, you know, things have been changing. Flash has been, you know, one of those uh, things that have just had, you know, tremendous impact uh, on architectures, and what we looked at at server SAN is, first of all, what are some of the things that the hyperscale guys were doing? So, if you look at, you know, the Googles, Microsofts, Amazons of the world, they were building things at massive scale without a separate storage array. If you add that in with what's happening with converged infrastructure uh, and flash, you're, you're seeing a new architecture that is compute and storage in a scale out manner, uh, you know, without a separate storage array. So, you know, there's a whole industry, you know, EMC really took storage and made it a separate line out of you buy the best of breed and it will be separate from the server and the applications itself. And, and now we have, you know, really dense compute uh, with, you know, multi-core environments. We have flash, we have dense disk arrays. Uh, that we can all put it in. So the, these new architectures that are leveraging software, um, and that, that's where VMware comes in. VMware has really you know, driven some of these software changes. Of course, with server virtualization about over a decade ago, uh, they, they really changed some of the architectures. And uh, now with the server SAN, they're really uh, starting to push deeper into uh, the storage side of the equation. Right, so let's dig into that a little bit more. So uh, VMware, as I mentioned at the top, recently announced the GA and, and announced pricing of their new vSAN solution. So tell us a little bit about that and, and kind of what it means for the market. Yeah, so, so, so it, it's really important. So, you know, not only is, is VMware uh, kind of the leader in hypervisors and server virtualization, uh, but, uh, you know, when they push forward what they called the software-defined data center vision, uh, they really looked at how do we extend the benefits that we had with server virtualization across the, the storage and the network stack, and virtual SAN is how they do that, or vSAN is how they're going to do that in storage. So uh, it was announced uh, last year at VMworld. Uh, so they went into a public beta for about six months, and now it's generally available. So here's a real solution from a very powerful vendor in the market that is looking to, you know, in many ways, disrupt the way that storage is bought. Uh, so, you know, it's definitely going to have a big impact on, on the market. Uh, I've heard, you know, that there's been plenty of startups that have been pushing uh, similar either software-defined or, you know, hyper-converged type applications. And with VMware, there's a lot of attention from everyone. And, uh, you know, in, in many ways, many people think it'll be the, the rising tide that lifts many of the boats. Uh, on the other hand, you've got some of the traditional uh, storage guys that uh, it could disrupt their business. Mm -hmm. So, so let's dig into the technology a little bit. From a, from a technology perspective, how does uh, vSAN compare to some of the other solutions that are on the market today? Yeah, so, so uh, first I'll talk for a second. If you talk software-defined storage, uh, it, it's, it's kind of, uh, SDS is a bit of a mess in the marketplace. There's some companies that say, hey, we're storage and we have software. Therefore, we're software defined, even if it's an architecture that's 15 or 20 years old. Uh, and, and there's, uh, you know, some people that are just kind of just like we saw cloud washing and big data washing. Uh, you know, software defined storage is kind of this amorphous thing out there that doesn't uh, have a great definition. But uh, what what vSAN does is it's actually built into the hypervisor layer. So as I mentioned earlier, you know, VMware is still the market leader in server virtualization, and they're going to put. Uh, that management functionality to be able to handle both my compute and storage resources and scale that, uh, you know, in the hypervisor layer. So what VMware called hypervisor converge. Um, and of course, that, that's a real point of control. What VMware needs to do is gain stickiness with their hypervisor. People have said for the last couple of years that the hypervisor is commoditized, and if VMware can get more people liking this new function, uh, it will have them bore, buy more licenses, and it will be less likely that they might flee to go to Microsoft's Hyper-V or the, the open source version, which is KVM. So Microsoft wants to get stickiness there, uh, and you know th th that's really important. Now, th there's a, an architectural decision point. Do I build it in the hypervisor, like VMware do, or do I do it outside the hypervisor with other software, either in the guest or other parts of the ecosystem? Uh, it is not you know, a, a cut and dry, one is definitely better than the other. There are trade-offs. Being in the hypervisor, in, in, it should allow for um, you know, less CPU utilization, which in general is good. 
Um, but there, there could be some trade-offs as to, you know, how much functionality can I really put into the hypervisor? Uh, and it, it's not necessarily all that open. When I mean open, you know, there are ways that we can get functionality into the hypervisor. Pernix Data uh, just announced a partnership uh, to have kind of deeper integration uh, with VMware, uh, but uh, it, it's not like with Zen. Uh, I'm sorry, with KVM or Zen, you know, the two open source alternatives out there that I, I can really, anybody can just put functionality into it. Um, interesting to note that, you know, VMware is not the only hypervisor in, embedded solution of this source. Scale computing uh, is embedded in KVM and is an alternative that they've been selling to VMware. But uh, if VMware can get people to like vSAN and like this architecture, they're going to stick uh, with, with VMware as opposed to many of the other solutions out there. Um, you know, if I take for an example uh, a, a Nutanix uh, who builds from the, the, the guest layer and they can put lots of functionality into uh, their own software stack, uh, Nutanix can run on not only VMware but other hypervisors as well. So in some ways this is a bit of a lock-in um, from VMware's standpoint. Mm -hmm. So anyone who's followed VMware knows that a lot of its success is due to its really strong uh, both channel and technology partnerships that they've established over the years. So what impact will vSAN have on that? What's their strategy around partnerships with vSAN? Yeah, and, and this, this is a really interesting and kind of nuanced, uh, you, you know, piece of the equation here that, you know, how do they go to market and how do they partner? So first of all, um, this should be a good partnering uh, solution for uh, server uh, deployments. So if we look at, you know, when I first got involved with VMware back in the early 2000s, uh, it was, you know, HP, IBM, and Dell that were the real uh, drivers uh, of these technologies. And today uh, at, at the launch, uh, you saw, uh, you know, IBM, Dell, Cisco, and Supermicro as uh, partners in what's called the vSAN Server Ready uh, partnership, which this basically means that they can build an entire appliance pre-baked out with the configuration that they have. Uh, so uh, it's a good way for VMware to sell licenses. It's a good way for those OEM partners to kind of expand what they're doing. And it should fit nicely with many of the existing VMware uh, you know, channel partners. So the, the, the question I have is how are those channel partners going to make money? Um, because the, the vSAN solution, the good thing about it is it's going to be a simpler architecture, um, but that might reduce some of the services that a channel partner can play. And from a technology partner standpoint, one of the big ones I didn't mention was HP. HP is not a server-ready uh, server partner out of the gate. Uh, they will be a t solution that I can do kind of what's known as the build your own, so I can buy just about any x86 machine and, and build this node, but uh, HP has uh, their, their own VSA uh, design solution. Uh, came long ago from the left-hand acquisition. It's done quite well in the marketplace, and so there will be some tension between some of the HP Salesforce and, and some of the VMware ones. And, and finally, uh, on, on the ecosystem partners, uh, you know, what does this mean for the storage uh, ecosystem? You know, VMware has been adding more storage functionality into their stack, and in many ways that puts them at odds with uh, you, you know, some of their traditional partners. Uh, a lot of news was made uh, at, at their partner exchange uh, that Veeam, who was one of the early uh, evangelists of virtualization in VMware specifically, was left out of that environment. Veeam, of course, still sells plenty into the VMware environment, uh, but they're, they're also doing lots with Hyper-V and all their alternatives. And, and you've seen through the storage ecosystem, everybody is hedging their bets and making sure that they don't allow VMware to have too much power and that customers have the flexibility to choose the hypervisor that they want. And this is an example where VMware, uh, you know, is going to try to make, you know, people stick on vSphere, while some of the other VMware solutions, if I think about NSX on the networking side, can, can work across many hypervisors. So, it, as I said, it's a bit nuanced, uh, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, layers as to, you know, where VMware fits. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I'd say it's, it's a bit of a mixed message on the ecosystem mm -hmm. front. So let's switch gears and talk about what it means for customers. So obviously with the GA just uh, having uh, been released, uh, vSAN is a 1.0 product. So really what's the sweet spot for this product at this point? Um, and, and what are some of the, the ways customers can use this today? Yeah, uh, great question, Jeff. I, I know we talk a lot about where, where this fits from an application standpoint. And, uh, you know, the, the first one that seems to be a, a big winner here is VDI. Uh, of course, Citrix is the leader when it comes to uh, desktop virtualization, and VMware has made a lot of moves with their end-user computing. They actually refreshed uh, a good part of their management team, uh, and they, they made a big acquisition with AirWatch uh, to really get deep into the mobile space. But when it comes to desktop virtualization, uh, VMware Horizon View has definitely expanded. Uh, you know, it's it, it's 
maturity uh, and it's getting into more customer environments. And this is a nice, should be simple, uh, you know, and, and relatively low cost uh, solution that customers can deploy for VDI. Um, so, the, you know, the, the question is from, from both a capital expense and operational expense, uh, there's a lot of VDI solutions out there from the convergence partners that work with VMware, the storage partners that work with VMware, all the flash guys out there. It, it's a very noisy market. Um, and, you know, it's, it's an interesting uh, project-based deployment. Um, but the big thing for VMware is they're not targeting traditional storage applications. They're not going to storage guys and saying, hey, you know, get rid of whatever, you know, SAN or NAS array you have and, and do vSAN. This is really a pitch towards uh, the virtualization administrator or what they'd like to call a cloud architect. Uh, so VDI is a great fit. Test Dev is a good fit. Um, it just the, you know, OLAP uh, might fit here. But today, you know, this is not something I'm going to put, you know, a, a thousand seat exchange on or my database on. Uh, as the solution matures, uh, it's expected that it should move up the stack just like uh, vSphere did over the years with, with server virtualization. So, final question. Obviously, you covered the conversion infrastructure market uh, very closely, kind of a leading uh, thought leader in that space. What's happened in the last year in terms of maturity in that market? Yeah, so uh, it, it definitely has matured a lot, and we're seeing huge growth. Uh, what, what people have said is, you know, does vSAN really change the landscape uh, for, uh, you know, converged infrastructure? And while I think it's very important for software-defined storage and especially for the server SAN space that Wikibon's put forth, I really don't think it has a drastic impact on converged infrastructure for two reasons. One is, if you look at the leaders in converged infrastructure today, uh, it's companies like Oracle, uh, it's, uh, you know, VCE with their vBlock, uh, and, uh, you know, IBM and, and the IBM Lenovo piece, and most of the applications that those, you know, big, uh, you know, big iron target uh, are not the ones that uh, vSAN are going to fit into today. Uh, so, you know, look at VCE, uh, you know, this is not going to disrupt anything that's happening in the Cisco EMC partnership of VCE. company did well over a billion dollars last year, and from all that I've heard, uh, things are accelerating this year. It's, it's a key driver for the really large customers that are buying UCS. Uh, and if you look at the hyperconvergence space, they're seeing real growth too. So I mentioned Nutanix before. Simplivity is another one seeing really good growth. Um, some of them obviously will look at vSAN as uh, either a direct competitor or a potential competitor, and, and others just look at it as, you know, as I said before, that rising tide that will lift all ships here. So uh, converged infrastructure is growing greatly. Uh, of course, we did the first market forecast for converged infrastructure. Look to Wikibon uh, soon for actually our, our market forecast on the server SAN space and how that will impact it. Uh, so, you know, exciting times to see how vSAN, uh, you know, really uh, moves forward certain parts of the market and, and how things uh, adjust throughout. Well, great. Well, obviously a lot happening in this market, so we'll be keeping an eye on your research on wikibon.org, and that's where you can find all the great research on server SAN, virtualization, networking, uh, and all things infrastructure. So thanks for joining us for this CUBE conversation, and we'll see you next time.